You sometimes get to the uh, idea of power generation in a uh, zero aggression principle society. Without government, power would probably at this stage of the game be nuclear. It really is safe, clean, and generates a ton of power. In the accidents that we've seen happen, it's because something was not engineered correctly, or you know, like in Chernobyl, uh, God, you know, everything was wrong with that. Just everything was wrong with that. Um, modern nuclear generators don't do that. They are safe, they're clean, they generate a ton of power. The main thing you have to remember about one, if you, you know, want to make sure that they're going to operate fine, is don't put them on a fault line. You know, uh, that's what happened with the Japanese. It was not anything wrong with the generator. It was uh, the fact that they had it on a freaking fault line. You know, you put something on a fault line, it's going to be a problem if you have an earthquake that, in their case, created a you know, tidal wave and other things. And yeah, then you're going to get problems. But if you take the things and you stuck, say, 15 of them uh, in the middle of Wyoming, you know, the only thing that's a danger in Wyoming is if the Yellowstone caldera blows. If the Yellowstone caldera blows, we have a lot more problems. And in fact, the problem with the, any problems with the nuclear plants take care of themselves because the pyroclastic flow on that uh, reached across at least the entirety of what is currently Wyoming and probably two thirds or so into um, Iowa, I'm sorry, not Iowa, but South Dakota, Nebraska, etc. The pyroclastic flow is superheated gas and uh, ash that is flowing at roughly the speed of sound. You put 10 or so nuclear plants out there, if that thing blows, they're done for. And there's nothing to worry about. Uh, you do have to worry about getting some infrastructure out there to get the uh, power back. But I mean, put it someplace like that. There are lots and lots of places. There is a nuclear plant here in Nebraska, uh, at Nebraska City, and it's been running my entire life. I know about it a little bit because my father used to make a bit, uh, some of his living. Uh, he ran his own business as a psychologist. And what you always have to do in those things is you have to go and psychologically test every single one of the employees on a regular basis. Um, and he did a lot of that testing. And that place has been running for my entire life. Uh, with absolutely no problems whatsoever. And I'm, I assume that they update those uh, generators and reactors as the uh, technology gets better. And it's been doing a bang up job with no problems for 50 plus years. You need water for nuclear energy? Yeah, you do need some. Um, but uh, what a lot of people don't know is this whole part of the country is sitting on top of the uh, North Platte aqua uh, Aquifer. This is an underground source of water where we get all of our water, where everybody in Nebraska, South Dakota, uh, probably most of Kansas, big, huge chunks of, uh, of Wyoming. It is a giant aquifer. It's filled with water and is in no danger of disappearing. All you got to do is dig deep enough and boom, you're into the aquifer. And that's exactly what you know, cities and towns here do. Um, so if you put them in Wyoming, I really don't think there'd be a problem. Just dig down, you know, it's not really an issue. Half a sec. Yeah, my, my chair is old. About the best thing I can do is rotate it a few degrees and hope that that causes it not to drop anymore. But I think in Libertopia, you would have very safe, very clean uh, nuclear energy. The problem with nuclear energy now is that uh, my parents' generation and my generation were so afraid of nuclear energy. Uh, we had the stupid idea. I didn't because I know enough about it. But we had the stupid idea that a problem with a nuclear reactor would cause a nuclear explosion. You know, that a meltdown meant boom. And that's not what it means at all. Just look over at Fukushima. They had an actual meltdown. Uh, problem, huge problem for them locally, but not a giant explosion. And it did not really contaminate much of anything except the immediate area. And again, don't put them on a fault line and you're probably fine. Um, other things that sort of come up in uh, a Libertopia-type world is space travel. 
Uh, Larry, Larry says, fear is promoted all the time. Yes, I was very, very happy. I had occasion to pick up a couple of hippies. I didn't even know hippies still existed, but these guys were clearly, you know, hippies of the stoner variety, right? I picked them up because at the time I was living in uh, Redfield, Iowa, and the uh, exit from Redfield, Iowa, the highway that goes to Redfield, onto Interstate 80, which is a huge major, th major thoroughfare between Chicago uh, all the way out to San Francisco. The, they, some idiot had dropped them off on that exit, and there isn't even a convenience store there. You know, the people who are driving past there oftentimes don't even go off. And I'm under something that people may have heard me on the, on the stream here may have heard me talk about before, which is the obligation. Uh, goes back a ways. When I was 19 years old, I was uh, uh, out in the, working at, at a boys' camp in Minnesota, near Brainerd, Minnesota. Um, really exclusive boys' camp. Uh, we had a kid, for example, whose last name was Hershey. And he flew into Brainerd on a private jet. Yes, that kind of Hershey. I mean, it was that sort of people. And my first job when I got there, I got there, talked to people, and they immediately put me behind a hand-pushed mower to mow the forest. That's, you know, what you did for these kids. So I'm out there, and what I used to do is I would uh, hitchhike 20 or so miles into town, into Brainerd from where that place was. And on my way back one time, a uh, tornado warning went off. Now, a tornado warning meant at that time one had been sighted on the ground. And being out in the middle of nowhere, you know, on the side of the road is not a good place to be. The best you can do is dive into the ditch if a problem happens. So I'm out there, and I'm kind of walking back, and I'm, you know, just have my thumb out as I'm going. And a guy stopped, and he picked me up, and he took me all the way to the camp gates, which was well out of his way. And he said that it was his obligation that for help he had once received, he must in return help ten others, each of whom would then help ten others, so that good deeds would spread out like ripples from a pebble in a pond. And if you've ever watched Kung Fu, you saw that exact thing there. But I swear to you, this actually happened to me. So I saw these two hippies by the side of the road, and I thought, well, here comes the obligation. These guys are in trouble. They're never going to get a ride here. So I picked them up and then told them my story and said, and now I'm passing this obligation on to you. And we're driving back, we're, we're driving along the road, and um, I knew where they were headed. Uh, if I'd had the time, if I didn't need to be someplace, I'd have taken them all the way. But I took them to a, a very large truck stop where I knew they could find a ride where they were going. Because it wasn't that far, you know, from where we were. Uh, probably two, two and a half hours drive. Um, but uh, I picked them up, and we were talking about this whole concept of energy generation, and they said they wanted nuclear. And I just about, I went, my jaw just about dropped because I went, oh, thank God. You know, even hippies of the next generation understand that nuclear is the way to go. You know, so I think in Libertopia, we would have a lot of nuclear power plants that would be run by private companies and be reducing quite a lot of energy. We'd still have cars and things like that, but, you know, no coal-fired or uh, oil-fired plants. What would be the point? You know, the amount of energy that you can get out of nuclear is so much greater. You throw up a bunch of those around the country and you don't need coal or oil-fired anymore. And that would also bring down the price of um, gasoline, by the way, because if you're not using oil by the gajillions in these plants, that means you're going to have a lot more of the uh, supply. It's going to be a supply and demand issue. Supply goes up, demand the same, stays the same, you're going to have lower prices. And in the long run, you know, not immediate because there's really no good way to put you know, the kind of energy into a car that gasoline does with an internal combustion engine. When they talk about batteries, that's all nonsense. That's one of the reasons I'd love AOC to take me up on my offer. I would love to drive her across the state of South Dakota, timing when a uh, battery-powered vehicle would go out, stopping, and then waiting four hours, like you'd have to do for a charge. Just waiting, sitting there and say, okay, we're going to stop now. We're going to imagine we're an electric vehicle. We have just run out of charge. We're going to pull over at the next exit. We're going to sit there 
for four hours as if we were charging. Um, I don't think you're going to do that, but eventually there will come something, you know, some brainy individual who did not, was not working under restrictions of government laws and regulations would come up with something that would allow us to uh, at least make those engines far more efficient or would, uh, you know, replace them with some other power that I can't even imagine right now. You know, who knows? Maybe somebody, maybe all our troubles are solved. Uh, like in uh, Stargate SG-1 when we found a zero-point module. If we can uh, tap into that, uh, our troubles are all over, you know. Um, there are some nuclear generators that are pretty small. My father often suggested, when, before he passed away, that what you do is you take one of those and put them into a car. And essentially, you have the engine for life. If you want a new car, you swap the engine out into a new chassis, and you've got a new car. But you keep the, uh, keep the power for life. Uh, you could certainly have something, and, and that's the thing, if you, if you let this go, then they're going to keep making this stuff smaller and more efficient uh, to the point where you can maybe have one in your home, uh, you know, your, and, and forget about all the plants. Um, when you're not hamstrung by government, when you're not hamstrung by regulations, you just let your engineers go and do what they want. Who knows what you're going to come up with? You know, even today, cars, right? They're so heavily regulated that even making engineering changes to them have to be gone through a government thing. You cannot, you cannot just make engineering changes to a car. You have, you have to make the engineering changes, submit them for review. It takes forever. You know, it's ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. When you don't have that, then you're going to have engineers just letting their imaginations loose and things are going to shoot out uh, scientifically. Ultimate power in this world has always been one simple thing the control and manipulation of minds.